sometimes, we want to make sure we have the message that the Lord wants for us. And one phrase that kept going over and over in that song is, we're ready, Lord. We're ready, Lord. The title of the message this morning is, are you ready? I preached in this pulpit for 10 years in Spanish. So if something comes out that you don't understand... <laughs> That's why. <laughs> God bless us this morning on the bus rides. Um, we made some changes that I felt were necessary to try to uh, get the routes to where they needed to be and things like that. And, um, and we had some trouble last week. I think I mentioned that we had a, uh, a little boy that wanted to beat up another boy. Uh, you know, minor stuff. <laughs> in fact, I think I did see a fight this morning in the church here. There's about four or five of y'all fighting for the, the back row seats. <laughs> but uh, well, we've got a change going on here. Uh, we're in a different building right now. We're not going backwards. Please understand that the pastor is not going backwards. We're going forwards. But the question is, are you ready to go forward? Some may look at this and say, hey, you know, we're just going back to what it used to be. No, we can't go back. It's never going to be what it used to be. There's some things that we've got to remember with the church. I remember Jenny Millsap said this many, many years ago. I wrote it down in the Bible. I looked for that Bible and I couldn't find it. It's somewhere, but I, I think I've got it for the most part right. There's four things we've got to remember as we make any changes or any decisions, number one, we've got to maintain biblical preaching. We cannot stop preaching the Bible in its context, correctly divided like it's supposed to be. Now this junk that's going on now that wants to put everything together, we're different because we believe the Bible. It doesn't make us better. But we've got to follow what the Bible says. We need biblical preaching, straight and true. We need to water down. But don't need to make it such that uh, we don't want to hurt him or offend anybody. All you do is preach the word. It's going to offend people. Right, right, right. But we need the truth today. Amen. Amen. In politics, man, we need that more than ever. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if we're get it. But we need it. So we need biblical preaching. Number two, we need soul winning. Amen. We've right. got to have people that desire to understand that this world is not going to change unless those who have been changed right. try to do something to make it change. Amen. Amen. We've got to be out there. This bus ministry is important. If you've not been involved in it, get involved in it on Saturday. We need your help. There's more doors to knock on than we have the ability to knock on with the group that we have right now. We can't do it. We need you. Please help us with that. We need to compel them to come in. Bible preaching, so many. We need missions and giving. We cannot stop that. In this world, we're going to complete the Great Commission. It is what? In Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. We cannot stop. Amen. We cannot stop. Biblical preaching. Build a local and universal churches. And number four, and this is the one I think we forget sometimes, we've got to make sure we take care of the man of God. Amen. The church has got to take care of those in leadership, starting with our pastor. Right. We've got to take care of him. So he called me yesterday and said, we're in the car. He preached. I said, preaching. You couldn't find anybody else? <laughs> I know I'm fifth on your list. No, I didn't say that to you. But when he said, I, I want to support my pastor. If the Lord put it on his heart, I hope he put it on his heart. <laughs> Otherwise, we're in trouble this morning. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And the coming to the coming altar, whatever, go home. Um, <laughs> We've got to take care of the man of God. Right. Amen. We don't. We're going to trouble as a church. So please think about those things. Acts chapter 16. You thought that was it, huh? No, that was just the introduction to the introduction. No. Acts chapter 16 in the Bible, please. Acts chapter 16. When you've got that, you stand for just a moment, please. Are you ready? Are you ready to serve the Lord? This is an opportunity for us. You stepped up, then you stepped up before, it's time to step up again. 
Maybe you've never done something. It's time to start doing something. We need you. The local church needs you. And we need to work together on these things. Acts 16, 25, verse 25, we'll start there. It says, At midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and for all that were in the house. And he took them the same hour of the, that night, the night and washed their stripes and were baptized. And he and all his stripe way. And when he had brought them into the house, he set meat before them. And what does it say together? Rejoice. Rejoiced, believing in God with all his Amen. Amen. Father, we need you this morning. Amen. Amen. Help us. Lord, I'm thankful for your goodness, but I need you, Lord. In order to complete the task that's at hand, God, we need your presence here. Father, it's a different place, but it's the same God. Amen. So I ask the Lord just to bless us and help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you're like us, we get alerts all the time, don't we? Our phones give us alerts. They, if you're, where is it? Iredell Firewire? What's up? My wife says that, please. Iredell Firewire. I don't know if that's right or not. That's what it is in our house. Okay? And we get alerts by that. She looks at it, and, and if something's going on in our house, <laughs> that was an alert right there. <laughs> something's going on that's important in our area, it's, you need to be ready. There's some guy who just got out of jail and he moved into our area. Or, or there's other alerts. There's weather alerts. You know, they, they give us a weather alert that says, snow's coming. So what do we do? We run to the store. I mean, it's an alert and it causes a reaction for us. And that happens, I tell my wife, go to the store, get us something. She says, how much did I spend? I don't know, a thousand, two thousand dollars? I don't know. <laughs> Let's get food, though, just in case. You know, that can't happen when you don't have food. Then it's not a good thing. So, so buy it at the store. I don't care if nobody else gets anything. Just make sure we got something. <laughs> we react to these alerts and all kinds of things. I mean, a Facebook alert comes on about everything that was going on before stops immediately. And we've got to look and see what that Facebook alert was. And it causes us to a reaction. And we're ready for those things. If it does become an alert that, that causes us maybe a little concern or care or whatever, it causes something in us. And we look at this story here. In the end of this story, what a praise the Lord, man. They were in prison. And, and a miracle happened. They're out of prison now. Uh, the, the, the captain of the guard wanted to kill himself. And in the midst of the darkness, I don't know how Paul did it, outside of the Lord Jesus Christ telling them, you need to shout to, to tell the guard everything's okay. Don't kill yourself. God did a miracle. He not only loosed them from that jail, he also loosed this family from the death uh, the, the death of the sin they had. They became saved. God did a miraculous thing here. And we finished this and it's great. Wow, praise the Lord. This thing happened. We're so excited. God, you can do it here and he can do it here. And he Amen. wants to do it here. And he will do it here if we'll ask him. Amen. But there's a lot of things that have to go on behind the scenes and beforehand for this to happen. And the question is, do we want to go there? And are we ready to get there? Amen. How do we get there? So in order to find that again, as Baptists and kind of fundamental Baptists, we've got to be, as I talk about biblical preaching, we've got to preach in this context. So we've got to say, what happened for them to get there? And the question is, and will be throughout this whole message, are you ready to serve the Lord? We want to see this happen. We want souls to be saved. Again, we want God to perform miracles in our lives. Sure we do. But how are we going to get there? Let's turn back to verse, the, the end of chapter six, 15, verses 36. There's three things I want us to see this morning.
morning. They've got them ready, and we've got to be ready when things happen. This just wasn't a simple thing. They just didn't go through life and everything was hunky dory. Uh, when they went to some place and they got the food they needed and everything they needed. No, there were some things that happened. Some difficult things that happened to get them to that point where God blessed them in such a miraculous way. And again, I want to be there. I want to get there. In verse 36, the Bible says, And some days after Paul said, uh, some days after Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they do. A good thing, a positive thing, something to help the churches out. They'd established some churches. They wanted to see them, those churches and make sure everything was okay and get excited about it. We think that's a great thing. But look what happened here. Barnabas determined to take with them Mark, John, whose surname was Mark, but Paul thought not good to take him with them who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them. Good night. Two men that loved the Lord. Two men that wanted to serve the Lord. Two men that were doing mission work for God, a good thing for God, and they had a contention. But again, let's look at the end result here. I don't know what happened. I don't know all those things. But number one, we're going to have in our lives, we're going to be ready for this conflict. We're going to have conflict in our lives. Even our church here. Some of you might be here this morning and say, I cannot believe we moved from down there in this place. I don't know. I'm not assuming. I don't want to be ugly, please. Uh, but we're going to have conflict. There's going to be things happening. I mean, we heard time after time in church, I need to change the carpet. And one one, blue one, and red. They split the church for a little old conflict like that. But the question is, are you ready when the conflict comes up to reproduce or, or to come up with a solution that is, that is godly and is biblical in those things? We've got to understand that conflict is going to happen, but are you ready for that thing? conflict we're going to have. And we look out through these things here. And verse 39 says the contention was so sharp between them that they parted asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches. The end result was a positive thing. Do you see that? They had conflict. They had problems. But yet, at the end of the day, they determined what? We will serve the Lord. Amen. And we've got to come to that conclusion. Conflicts are going to happen, but they don't need to stop us from serving the Lord. Amen. So are you ready when conflict comes? Are you willing to do what's right? Are you willing to do the biblical thing with it? Conflict in our lives. There's three types of conflict that we see throughout this passage here in the end of 15 and the verses in chapter 16. The first one is with the saved. And we just saw that here. They had to deal with believers who did not agree with them. Not everybody in this church is going to agree with one another. But we right. need to agree. It's okay. <laughs> this is, this is, that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I'll take my keys out of that because you're going to jingle and jangle. <laughs> but we're going to have conflict there. I know I got the right message. Preach. Preach. They have to deal with the believers who did not agree with them. Let's just back up here. They had to deal with believers who did not agree with them, but they went forward in serving the Lord. They helped in confirming the churches a positive thing they did. Conflict with other believers or with the same. Yeah. Let's look at verses 16 through 18. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination made met us, which brought her mess master's great gain by soothsaying the same fall of Paul and us and Christ, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And they did this many, she did this many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of the saint the same hour. We're not going to have conflict with Satan, but we're going to have conflict with the devil and say, take any things. It's, it's real. We know that there's a, there's a, a struggle in this world that we cannot see. 
And we've got to understand the devil does not want us to go forward. And things are going to happen. And there's going to be conflict. There's a conflict every Sunday morning, is there not? It's real. It happens in your home. It happens when you're trying to get ready. It seems like there's an argument almost every Sunday morning because you know you need to be here. God knows you need to be here. But the devil's going to do everything he can to stop you from being in the house of God. If he can discourage you and bring conflict into your life, then he wins. The question is, are you ready to say, husband, I'm sorry, wife? Are you ready, wife, to say, I'm sorry, husband? Are you ready, child, to say, I'm sorry, mom and dad? I will be on time next time. Whatever it might be, conflict with the Savior is conflict with satanic things as well. When we got so many knocking on doors, you can guarantee you're going to wind up at a door where someone's going to bless you out for your being there, just trying to give them some good news. It's going to happen. I've been in some trailer parks where I have been not able to do anything, accomplish anything. Satan just had his hand in there. But I'm going to tell you something. After 10 years of working in one specific subdivision, I picked up three kids this morning there. Amen. Take that, devil. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Conflict. Amen. We've got to keep going. We cannot stop. Right. But the devil's going to try. And many times he wins on Sunday morning. Does he not? Amen. But are we ready for that conflict? Are we ready for it? So we see it was saved, the satanic. But we're also going to see it with the selfish, 19 through 22. And when our masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men being Jews do, Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent out their clothes and commanded to beat them. Conflict. Because if some people say, you're not coming where we are, you're messing our things up, you're messing things up for us. We're not going to have this religious stuff here. We're not going to have this Christianity stuff here. We're not going to have this. And you're going to have conflict with those who are just in place where they are for selfish reasons. And we're going to send a conflict within our lives. They had to deal with people that were only out to serve themselves and have no desire for spiritual things. Paul and Silas weren't good for business. And you as a Christian might not be good for business somewhere because they ask you to do something you shouldn't do. And that's it. I'm in business. I understand that. I tell people time and time again, we will take the high road in this. I'm not going to lower myself for a dollar. Maybe for a thousand, not for one. No, I will lower myself for that. I won't do that. Right. Conflict in our lives. Amen. Number two, I want to look at challenges in our life. Are you ready for the challenges of your life or not? First thing we'll look at is people. Challenges with people. Verse 16. You're going to think a little bit differently than what, what makes. In chapter 16, verse 1, it says, They came to Derby and list from behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jew, as believed, but his father was a Greek. I'm not going to go through the time set, but I want to get through everything that I can. But there's a challenge here. They found a young man there in Derby, a list of name, Timothy. Timothy was a disciple, but Timothy hadn't gotten everything he needed to become the Timothy that he was in first and second Timothy. So what happened? Somebody had the challenge of investing time into this young man. Are you ready for this challenge? Most of us, me included in some cases, we are so busy living our lives that we're not affecting anybody else. And we wonder why the young people are not serving the Lord like we want them to. Or the new converts are just don't seem to get it like we need them to. Maybe it's because we're not ready for the challenge of people in our lives. Right. I've said it time and time again down in Mexico. I mean, just it's crazy, the ministry itself. I tell you, if you're watching some people, I don't love the ministry. But wait a second. 
Our ministry is people. Right. That's when we have a challenge in our lives of helping people and discipling them. Are you as a Christian right now ready to take somebody under your wings and say, I will help you? Right. Right. I've got some young men back here, Christian and Devlin. They've been on the bus for three weeks now. They're a blessing. They're wonderful young fellas. But somebody's got to spend some time with them. And help them. Are you ready for that challenge? Are you ready for that? Whoever it may be, we've got to be ready. Let's look in verses 6 through 11 here in chapter 16. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they come to Mysia, they ascended them unto Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passed into Mysia and came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. What a challenge here. They go here. And they say, No, don't go there. Okay, we're going to go here. No, don't go there. Okay, we're going to go here. No, don't go there. Man, wouldn't that be a challenge to you? Wouldn't you say, Lord, what in the world is going on right now? I need to know what you want me to do. And so finally, he sees a vision and says, Go to Macedonia. We're going to challenge our lives for people. We're going to challenge our lives for places as well. Yeah. When God began working in my life about going to Mexico, it was a conflict for me. It was a challenge for me. I didn't speak Spanish. I didn't really know the people. I love Mexican food, but it always gave me a stomach ache. <laughs> You ask my wife, you ask my children. There was one time after a, a meal at a Mexican restaurant, it messed my stomach up so bad. We had the back roads. There was no bathroom. <laughs> so what do we do? We stopped on the side of a road and made a bathroom. <laughs> the problem is it hurts so bad, I just jumped out of the car and forgot to put it in park. <laughs> Robin's on one side, James is in the back, Victoria's in the back, and Alicia in the back, and the car's just going down the road. <laughs> but I had a need. I had a problem. I had a challenge. I needed to find a place. And so God called me to Mexico. Lord, you better put, give me a house with seven bathrooms then. <laughs> But here's the thing is, when I said yes, and I went, I found out I didn't need the back. Well, that's it, maybe, but not like before. Why? Because I was ready. I said yes to the Lord, whatever that might be. And we look here, and they got some what they thought was, I said, no, 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 no. Don't go here, don't go there. But here's the place I need to go. As you as a Christian, are you ready for that challenge of the place God wants you to be and where God wants you to serve? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Conflicts in our lives. Challenges with people. Challenges with places. And there's one more challenge here. Let's look in, in chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. And when they had laid many stripes upon them and cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast and soft. You know where they went? To the deepest, darkest, nastiest place in the whole prison. The challenge of not only people and places, but what about prison or persecution? That challenge is going to happen in our lives. Are we ready for that? Oh, when that happens, no, that's, that's not. I've got my limits of my Christianity. This is how far I'm willing to go. Well, if we're going to see God do great things in this church, we're going to take that challenge of prison and say, God, whatever. Whenever, mm -hmm. however, yeah. I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. And it might come to that point. The challenge of that. Are you ready for that? They were thrown into prison for having loosed a possessed girl. Listen to this. They were put in prison for something good. But they did. Yeah. Something helpful. Something that loosed and freed a young girl from satanic influence and a spirit in our lives. A good thing. And they're thrown in prison for that. 
that's coming today in the United States of America. How are we going to stand and take that challenge in our lives? Conflict, challenges. May I finish up with one more? And that's conversations. Are you ready for specific conversations within your life? That's at verses 39 through 41. Chapter 15, I'm sorry, 39 through 41. And when the contention was so sharp between them, that they had parted asunder one from the other, so Barnabas took Mark and sent him to Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas, and the part of being recommended by the brethren with the grace of God. And they went through Syria, so they were confirming the churches. There's conversations we're going to have to have with the devoted. Okay, this was not a gift to people that were, were not trying to serve the Lord. This was a conversation between devoted people. And my question is, are you ready to be able to handle those things? We are so easily offended today right, that we can't have a spiritual or biblical conversation where something comes up and maybe there's a, a little difference. I'm not talking about doctrine. Doctrine needs to stay the same. I will fight somebody over doctrine. But I will not fight somebody over opinion. How you want to do the bus ministry, and how I know is best to do the bus ministry. That is a conflict or a conversation we can have. But when we leave, let's serve the Lord. Are you ready? Are you spiritual enough for a conversation that keeps you in the church, keeps you excited in the church, and keeps you serving the Lord in the church? Good. They had a conversation with fellow brethren. Men wanted to serve the Lord, but they didn't see eye to eye on everything. It was a difficult conversation. I'm sure it was. But in the end, they both went off to serve the Lord, and they actually, it says here, they all made an impact for the Lord. In fact, Barnabas so well that Paul himself said, bring Mark to me, for he's profitable unto me. Wow. Paul admitted it. At the time, he was right. But now he sees what Barnabas did was an amazing thing to help a young man that was hurt and was down and felt defeated. That conversation may be a difficult conversation, but are you ready for that conversation to be devoted? Let's first look at verses 12 through 15 of chapter 16. 12 through 15. Another conversation that took place. And all the multitude, uh, oh, I'm going to 12 through 15. And from thanks to Philippi, which is the chief city of that port of Macedonia, and a colony, and they were in that city abiding certain days. And on Sabbath day, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, son of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me, be faithful to the Lord. Come to my house and abide there. And she constrained him. Now, when Paul went there, she was a devout or religious person, but she was not a saved woman. Right. Are we able? There are some people that left out of Mexico. And again, I'm not going to throw off on anybody, but they were mostly 95% Catholic down there. The majority of them had never heard truly what Jesus had done for them, but they heard what the priest told them they needed to believe. There were some very devout people, very religious, devout Catholic ladies. And you don't go in there and tell them that Mary's not the Savior. You don't go tell them that the, the, the uh, Pope is not God. You don't start there. You've got to have a conversation where you're ready to tell them that Jesus is the only way. And you share the Bible with them. I went into a lady one time. She says, I don't let anybody but the Catholic priest into my house, but I'll let you in. I took her Catholic Bible. I know it wasn't King James. And I gave her one as quickly as I could. But there wasn't a King James in Spanish, so I gave her the best one. <clears throat> but I took her Catholic Bible, and I showed her how Jesus loved her and could save her. 
And the comment she made, she didn't even say that day. The comment she made was, I've never, ever let anybody outside the Catholic Church talk to me about spiritual things. But what you said makes sense. And that lady had a seed given to her. I don't know if she just saved enough. I'd love for her to introduce herself and have anyone. What a blessing that would be. The conversations were devoted. Conversations with about, are you ready for these things? Christians, the God has given us what? The Great Commission. What's the Great Commission? To go and to teach and to preach and to make disciples. That's what we're supposed to do. We are. The only way we're going to do that is we've got to be ready in conflict, in conversations, and in challenges with our lives. Are you ready? Do you want to make an impact? At the end of everything, we will stand in judgment for God and He'll say, I gave you an opportunity. I gave you my word. I gave you the Holy Spirit. And what did you do with it? Or did you get yourself ready for the work that I called you to do? The last thing here we see in verses 25 through 34 of chapter 16, a conversation with the destitutes. Are you ready just to witness this somewhere? Mm-hmm. Just to tell about the Lord. When's the last time you did that? Is it important in life? The way we get to do it is we've got to be ready. We've got to have an answer. We've got to share with them how God can save them. This man, this, this jailer, this Philippian jailer, he was not a good man. He showed, he didn't show love to Paul and the Silas. He did not. He thrust them into the worst place in the whole prison. Paul could have waited. Yes or no? And said, I'm going to wait. That man was awful to us. That man was ugly to us. He didn't take care of us. He didn't care about us. I'm going to wait until after he kills himself. And then I'll speak to everybody else. That is not the way Jesus did it. Me, that Paul did it. Nor did Jesus do it. Immediately he knew. He knew the rules. He knew what they were supposed to do. He immediately cried out in the darkness and the depth of despair in his own life and said, we're saved. Don't kill yourself. Amen. And here's some other good news to give to you. Are you able? Are you ready to have a conversation with somebody destitute and without Christ? We as a church, if we're ready, we need to do these things. Are you ready? They had the right attitude and the right spirit to help their captors and save lives both physically and spiritually. The Lord has given us an opportunity to serve Him freely. He's not going to force us. Do you understand that? When Christ saved us, He saved us so we would choose to serve Him. And there are opportunities that God gives to us every day. But the question is, are you ready? He has equipped us with all that is necessary in giving us the Holy Spirit and His Word. Are we taking advantage of this? Are we making our, are we making our lives count for the Lord? Are we ready to serve Him? Mm-hmm. Conflict is real and it will happen. Challenges of life are real and they will happen. Conversations with all types of different people are real and they will happen. The question is, are you ready? I know James came up with some kind of plan himself. I know others are looking at, hey, what do we do? How do we go forward? What is the best thing? Okay. We don't need a smaller church. We need a bigger vision. Right. Mm-hmm. And then God will fill the church as he sees necessary to do it. But the question is, again, are you ready to make some tough decisions in your life? The conflicts that come, the challenges that come. The conversations we need to have. We've got a little girl that just started coming on, and Angeline. Cute little girl. And uh, we're trying to get her mother to come to church. And yesterday, last time I went by there and talked to her, Angeline was all excited about coming to church. And I looked at her mother and I said, When are you going to come? But before she said, I'm not coming, I go somewhere else. Yesterday she said, Just give me a little while. We need that. We need that. Are we out there doing that? Are you ready? Are you ready? First Corinthians 16, 13 says, 
Watch she stand fast in the faith. Quit she like a man. Be strong. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3.15, But thanks sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Just stand your feet as we conclude. I want to give you one more passage. I ask for a special uh, invitation of song for this morning. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5 says, I charge thee therefore the God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead in his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they keep to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things and your afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. God has given all of us an opportunity. Position means nothing. Wealth means nothing. Your clothes mean nothing. Your house, your car means nothing. But what are we doing for the Lord? Are we ready for those things? So we can go on for the Lord. This is a great opportunity to see this church as full as it is this morning. What a blessing in knowing that we've got about 60 people in Super Church and probably another 30 in Spanish Church. What a blessing that is. But what are we going to do from this day forward for the Lord? Time to go back. Adelante, they say in Spanish. Adelante. Forward. 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 For the Lord. Would you close your eyes? Father, we need your help. Would you guide and direct in our lives? Use this time. And show us what we need to do. With your eyes closed, maybe you need to come forward and say, Lord, I need to be ready. I need to be ready. Are you willing to count the cost? Are you willing to do whatever the Lord wants you to do? Don't hesitate. Come now. Come now. Are you doing what God wants you to do? Are you taking every opportunity? Come now. Don't wait. Come now. As they sing this invitation song, you do as the Lord would have you to do. Just for a minute as we finish. I don't want to prolong this anymore. But maybe you want to say, Lord Clark, I, I know my life is not where it needs to be. I'm not serving the Lord like I should. I'm not ready. I'm not studying my Bible like I should. I'm not witness like I should. I've not handled conflict like I should. I've not handled the challenges of life like I should. But I sure need the Lord to help me to do the things that I need to do. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. Are you willing just now? Just stick up, raise your hand real quickly. Put it back down. Pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Many, many hands went up. I appreciate that. 
you're still welcome to come down here, but I won't force anybody to do that. But if we're going to make a change in this church and in this community and in this city and this county and in this state and in this great nation and in this world, we've got to be ready. challenging message that was, are we ready? In spite of the conflict, in spite of the challenges, in spite of the conversations that we have or don't have with individuals, are we ready? Is Calvary Baptist Church ready to go on with God's brother? That was wonderful. And you know, I, I got to thinking about uh, how God has orchestrated this service today. And uh, even tonight, because I know what God's placed on my heart, and it's just kind of a continuation of what you had, brother. And that has to be God. The song that Robin had this morning, uh, are we ready for God to bring the mighty power upon this place? But you know, all these things get us to that point that we are ready. But what will make us ready? <laughs> you come back tonight. And we're talking about what will get us ready. And we won't back up. We won't shut up. We won't uh, buckle down to this old world. But we'll be ready. Amen. God breathe on Calvary Baptist Church. What a blessing. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God's doing. Hey, it may look like 2022 is falling apart. Hey, it might. Well, it's not bad for the child of God. <laughs> Are we ready? Let's be ready when God shows up. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and close in prayer this morning and just ask God to continue to bless, guide, and direct. Uh, we'll be having a meeting with some fellows, the deacons, and the, uh, what do you call that? The steering committee, building committee, whatever it is this evening. And so you pray God give us wisdom and guidance that we'll be ready when God uh, tells us what we need to do. All right. Uh, Brother John Coach, how about you pray for us? Ask God to bless the rest of the day. Bring us back. Okay? Show us how we'll be ready. Every time we do, we make it just a mess. We heard it more and more, and I do pray that you just touch our hearts and let us all realize we need to get ready. The day's coming up. Yeah, it's going to help. I pray that anyone who's here today is not saved. Lord, I pray that you just touch our hearts and let us all realize that we're turning too late, Lord, to say that song. We pray for the service tonight. I pray that you touch that. Yeah, it's going to help. I'll be back in the end. And thanks for all you do, Lord. Hey. Hey. All right. Goodbye, Tim Robbins. Much love and appreciate.